In this video, I'm going to be looking at square rooting complex numbers and showing you the process, the algebraic process that you go through to do that. Now, to be clear, every complex number has a square root, okay? So you're not going to get any kind of ones that won't have a square root or have a problem. Um, but whether you'll get nice numbers or not, that's a completely other matter. Now, um, Effectively, finding the square root of minus 5 plus 12i is precisely the same as solving the equation z squared equals minus 5 plus 12i. Okay? So, because effectively you're saying, I want to find the square root of minus 5 plus 12i. So, I would imagine that that is a complex number, okay, of the form a plus bi. Then if you square both sides... you get this, where z is equal to the a plus bi. Okay, so answering that is precisely the same as solving this equation here. So, the idea then is to replace that z with a plus bi. And our job is to work out the a and the b. So if we expand the left-hand side, we're going to get a squared plus a times bi, so a, bi. Then we're going to get bi times a, so another a, bi. And then you've got bi times bi, which is b squared times minus 1, so minus b squared. That's equal to the minus 5 plus 12i. So if we group together the real parts on the left-hand side, we've got the a squared and the minus b squared. So that's your real part. The imaginary part is ab plus ab. So 2ab, and that's times the i. So the idea then, from here, is to compare coefficients. Compare the real parts, compare the imaginary parts. Because the real part on the left-hand side has got to be the same as the real part on the right, and the imaginary part on the left has got to be the same as the imaginary part on the right. So the a squared minus b squared has got to be equal to minus 5. So comparing the real parts, a squared minus b squared has got to be equal to minus 5. And if you compare the imaginary parts, the 2ab has got to be the same as 12. So the problem reduces to solving these simultaneous equations. So if we work with the second one, we can divide both sides by 2. And then let's rearrange this to get b equals. So b is equal to a over, uh, sorry, 6 over a. And I'm going to substitute that into the first equation. So we've got the a squared take away b squared, so 6 over a all squared, and that's going to be equal to negative 5. So a squared take away 36 over a squared is equal to negative 5. Let's multiply both sides by the a squared. So a to the 4 take away 36 is equal to minus 5 a squared. Let's add the 5a squared to both sides. Uh, sorry, and then we've got the takeaway 36 is equal to 0. OK. So what you have here is a quartic equation to solve. But because you've got a to the 4 and the a squared there, you don't have a cubed, you don't have the linear term of a. That means we've got a quadratic in disguise. OK, so we want uh, to solve the quadratic, right? So if we go into our quadratic solver, if you can't spot it, 1, 5, minus 36, and we get 4 and minus 9, OK? So that means that a squared is equal to 4, or a squared is equal to negative 9. OK, now, if a squared is equal to 4, then a must be equal to plus or minus 2. 
If a squared is equal to negative 9, then a must be equal to the square root, plus or minus the square root of negative 9. Okay? So, square root of negative 9 is 3i. So we've got plus or minus 3i coming from this. Okay? So, the problem here is that I've actually got four possible values of a. Um, so, we've got plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3i. Okay? So, let's have a look at all of our cases. So, if a is equal to 2, then b is equal to 6 over 2, which is, of course, 3. So we've got one possibility for z, which is 2 plus 3i. OK? Alternatively, we've got a is equal to negative 2, in which case b would be 6 over minus 2, which is minus 3. So z could be minus 2 take away 3i. OK? So this one is just the negative of that one, which is kind of making sense, right? Because you've got the z squared here. So if you square either of those, you're going to get exactly the same value. So that's, that's fine. So we've actually got two possible roots here. But what about these other ones? Now, remember, I set it up as a plus bi, where the idea was... was Okay, although I didn't explicitly state it, was that a and b would be real. Now, a being plus or minus 3i, let's see what happens. So if a was the 3i, then b would be 6 over 3i, so 2 over i. So multiplying that top and bottom by i, uh, well, actually, let's leave it alone. Let's leave it alone, and let's substitute that directly in, right? So if I've got 3i, so z is equal to a plus bi, a plus bi. So 2 over i times i is just 2. And you get the 2 plus 3i, which we had there. Right? If you put in the a is minus 3i, then the b is 6 over minus 3i, so minus 2 over i. So z is equal to a plus b times i. And so you get the minus 2 take away 3i, which is precisely the same as this one here. OK? So effectively, the algebra takes care of it rather than me having to worry that a and b are both real, okay? Which I want, really. So this is just repetition of the same result that I've got here, okay? So the square root of minus 5 plus 12i is either 2 plus 3i or minus 2 take away 3i, okay? Both of these, if you square them, will get you back to minus 5 plus 12i. And that's the algebraic process that you go through in order to square root a complex number.